As we know, 2019 ended with a bang. Ended with a bang in the UK. <laughs> in the UK, it ended with a bang, and in Iraq, it started. Uh, 2020 started with a bang. So, with that in mind, um, we're just going to focus on the UK. And mainly, Owen Jones. I haven't done any content on Owen Jones for a while. Um, he is someone I, I like to set my sights upon just because, wow, well, I mean, look at him. You know what he's like. He's, he's, he's asking for it all the time, isn't he? The way he behaves. You know, his behavior warrants the attention that he is given, the uh, negative attention, if you like. So Owen's throwing his toys out of the pram like uh, most Guardian writers are at the moment because of the results didn't go their way. Blaming everyone under the sun from Russian robots and to Nostradamus to, I don't know, the campaign managers had the flu. Or God knows. Polling stations were too far away from key voters. God knows what. All kinds of excuses for um, failure. That's good, isn't it? Blaming everyone except themselves. Oh, this is typical and don't expect it to change. Oh, I certainly don't. So what's this Owen said? The Tories plan an assault on progressive Britain. The left must be prepared. Be prepared and I hope the assault comes. This is coming from someone who doesn't care. But you know, this progressive malarkey is really annoying. And it's got to stop, hasn't it? As in Hungary, the line between the centre-right and the extremes beyond is becoming blurred. Well, that's quite rich coming from an extremely left-wing loon bag. But oh, I, I, I hate to label it. Someone who acts like an extreme left-wing loo bag. For the Tory right, Brexit was not simply a means to reconfigure the UK's relationship with the European Union. As it was for millions of voters, it was a blunt instrument to remodel society in its own image. And that is a very interesting thing for Owen Jones to say, that uh, for the Tory right, Brexit was not simply a means to reconfigure the UK's relationship with the European Union, um, but it was an instrument to remodel society in its own image. As opposed to the Socialist Labour Party remodelling society in its own image. Okay. So it just depends. So it's a question of which, how do you like, how would you like society to be remodelled by this uh, sort of, yeah, you know, because every party we can say about it is like, yeah, or by the Labour Party, which is, <laughs> I mean, which one did you want? No one wanted the... <laughs> no one wanted society remodelled like... <laughs> they didn't want that. So it's a very wise choice. Well done, everyone. Give you a clap. For once, I agree. This grand national project was rudely interrupted when Labour deprived the Conservatives of a majority in 2017. Yes, and in two years, you managed to completely fuck that up. Fantastic. Good for you. It will now be renewed with vigour. Underpinning it is both triumphalism and insecurity. <laughs> triumphalism, because Labour has been subjected to a devastating defeat, leaving it shattered and demoralised, stripped of seats it has held for decades, and because it has no plausible leader who can confidently presume to take the party to victory in 2024. Is that what the elections are? Is it not every five years now? Oh God, that's far too soon. It's too soon. Make it 2030. Insecurity. Because support for Labour among young voters is at, at an unprecedented high, while for the Tories, it's at an unparalleled low. I'm not sure if that's entirely true. I think there are data sets that might dispute that, but I don't know. Go look it up. I ain't got time for this shit. I'm just ripping on Owen Jones. Because the right knows Labour's economic policies are popular with young people. Well, yeah, all silly ideas are popular with the young. You know, I was young. Still am. Silly ideas are very popular with the young. You know, look at 1830 holidays. A silly idea. They're very popular with the young, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? You know, Freddo's. Very popular with the young. Um, anyway, uh, 
Uh, because the right knows Labour's economic policy is popular, driving its 2017 surge and provoking the only doubts Tory strategists had about victory this time around. And because it is keenly aware that a left-led Labour Party came horrifyingly close to forming a government just two and a half years ago, falling short by just 2,227 votes in seven constituencies, that near-death experience, so far as they are concerned, must never be repeated. The electoral map is already rigged in favour of the Tories. How is that? It took an average of just 38.264 votes to elect a Tory MP compared to 50, 50 sorry, 38,264 compared to 50,835 per Labour MP. That advantage will now be entrenched. I don't, I don't understand how this shit works, but fair enough. The Tories planned with uh, redrawing of constitu constituency boundaries would have handed them a majority of 104 if implemented in 2019, up from 80 as it stands. Borrowing from the Republican right, the introduction of voter ID as supposed solution to the nearly non-existent problem of voter fraud. Well, I don't think it's non-existent. I've heard of a few cases of voter fraud. The fact is, I think the voter fraud... I'm pretty sure the instances I've heard of a voter fraud were uh, by Labour candidates will hit poorer Labour-leaning voters the most. This whole uh, voter ID thing has been debunked so many fucking times. I've seen so much about it. Like, it's, it's this whole thought, oh, poor people don't have ID. All right. Poor people can't afford to have ID. They're poor. All right. Give some of my ID. Well, then, I don't know. It's like, oh, we, we want to make sure that, you know, we don't have any voter fraud. And they're like, oh, well, you don't want poor people to vote. Who says the poor people are going to vote for Labour anyway? Because uh, they didn't, did they? Or did they? I don't know. Did they? Well, not a lot of them. I mean, not enough, was it? Eh? An authoritarian power grab beckons. On page 48 of their manifesto, the Tories commit to examining the broader aspects of our constitution, including the relationship between the government, parliament and the courts, as well as an update of the Human Rights Act and administrative law. And of course... Everything they're going to do to all those aspects, you know, government, parliament, the courts, and Human Rights Act, and administrative law, everything the Tories is going to do is based upon pure evil, of course. Everything they're going to do is, is because they're evil. They're evil. They're the evil empire, aren't they? Because we don't, we don't live in a nuanced world anymore. There, there's no, you know, there, there's just good and evil. They're, they're evil. They're bad. And everything they're going to do is evil, isn't it? That's, that's, that's what Owen Jones tells us. And that's that's the simplistic view of life that you get from a Guardian columnist. Mm. It's all just evil, so that's good, isn't it? Uh, um, you know, that's grown-up talk. Expect assaults on perceived bastions of progressive Britain too. <gasps> the the bastions of progressive Britain. Who are they? Laurie Penny, George Monbiot. The Tories have pledged to ban all-out rail strikes. Good. Expect a weakening of already hobbled unions. And when have you given a shit about unions? Like, pretty sure all the probably union leaders, probably there's only union leaders that didn't vote for the Tories, just because it's like, but probably everyone in the union voted Tory. As Times Higher Education puts it, the conservative right would relish a full on US style culture war against universities over their supposed left wing bias. Prepare then, too, for an offence. An offensive against progressive thoughts in higher education. Good. Good. Because it's ruined everything, hasn't it? It's it's just because of this this cat. And I, I've I've had first hand experience with some of this shit. I mean, everything's whack now. I mean, comedy's whack. TV's whack. Films are whack. Music's whack. like everything. It's all whack. You know, everyone's too concerned about just nonsense instead of making good stuff. So good. And we all know where it came from. You know, these lunatics. Like when when education is just completely infiltrated by loons, the people with lunatic four, um, who are literally totalitarian like assholes to be honest, um, who want to shut everything down and, and say, Well, you know, saying deck chairs are racist. I mean like this is nonsense, isn't it? It's a nonsense, and it and and an all-out culture war. I say good, fucking good. We need a bit of balance in universities, don't we? Because what's the point in going? It gives you no. Literally, you go to university now, 
you get no job prospects, and you get brainwashed into being a lunatic who has no job prospects. It's a weird system when you think about it. You turn up at university, right, and you get put in, you know, you get put in mountains of debt, um, and and you study these courses that that teach you, you know, a, a very twisted version of reality. Um, they indoctrinate you into this uber -less, super left, super far left leaning nonsense factory of information belief system. I don't know what the hell I just said there. You know what I mean? They make people nutters, don't they? And and you get all this. And then when you come out of university with this useless degree and this weird mindset, um, and then you can't get a decent job. And But they've already got you because they've said, well, you know, it's the system, a uh, system of privilege, oppression, you know, uh, socialism is going to save you. You know, we, in university they told me that socialism was going to save the world. And, I've, and now I've got this useless degree uh, and I can't get a job and I think, yes, socialism will save everything. It's a fucking lose-lose situation, isn't it? You brainwash them, give them a useless degree and send them out there and then everything that you've told them is sort of confirmed because they're like, oh, yeah, oh, this, the game is rigged. They told me the game was rigged and it is. It's like, no, numb nuts. You should have gone done something good with yourself. You got played hard. You know, popular culture will be another battleground. Boris Johnson's threat to abolish the BBC license fee is an unapologetic attempt to coerce more favourable co coverage while menacing progressive cultural output. Good again. It's good. The BBC um, does its very best to be um, sort of mutual. But um, um, they accuse the BBC of, of constantly attacking Jeremy Corbyn, whereas probably a majority of the people... Like work at the BBC probably would vote would have voted for Jeremy Corbyn, and you'll never see an article on the BBC website. You'll never see many talking heads on BBC or many programs that are pro Brexit. You know, it's very biased in that sort of sense, um, and it does pump out a hell of. They have got these weird quotas there, and the progressive nonsense that they're trying to do at the BBC is is just is, is very bad. And it doesn't re it's sort of very London centric as well, so it doesn't really speak to the rest of the UK. So the BBC's got a similar problem the Labour Party have got, as in it's like it's 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 just speaking to a minority of people these days. Um, you know, they want to cover coerce more favourable coverage. Favourable coverage, right? While menacing pro yeah, the favourable coverage thing. Forget about that. It's just a nonsense. But what menacing progressive cultural output? Good, because it's terrible. It'd be all right if it was good, but it's not. It's not very good. Like I have no problem with progressive ideas and shit. But the fact is, when it infiltrates every aspect of culture, it generally produces crap, like really bad stuff. It's not very good. It's it's not challenging. It's mediocre. It's very heavy-handed. It speaks to people like they're idiots as well. With the heavy, with the heavy handed. Did you get the message that I'm putting across? It's really insulting, and heavy handed, and crap, and just crap. It's just not very good. If it was good, I might not have a problem with it. But it's not very good. The Tories' threat to review the broadcasting charter of Channel Four News and their boycott of Radio Four's TV program are indicative, indicative, indicative of a party intolerance of even mild press scrutiny. Ooh, I thought all the millionaire press was biased. I thought everyone was biased. Oh, and except the Guardian. Much of the press already behaving says the Tories' de facto campaigning wing. Okay, Owen. Right. New research reveals a far a farcical disparity between positive election coverage of the government and off the charts negative reporting of Labour. Well, maybe. Uh, well, no, it is kind of balanced out by the fact that most progressive outlets are on television. You know, just factor in newspapers. Most newspapers are fucking dying anyway. And this is, well, it's 2020 now. Um, information doesn't get absorbed as it once did. Um, you, you, you can't blame a right-wing press. Um, because the right, like... Because the right wing press will support will support the other side if they think it's good for the country. This has happened before. 
Um, the fact is, is that you know, there's just too much shit going on with Jeremy Corbyn. It was like, oh my god, Ed Miliband, look at that. All they used to take a piss out of him is how he ate a sandwich, and he wore some Wellington boots when he visited the flooded areas of the Southwest. It's kind of the fact that he looked a bit weird. There wasn't much else they said about him, was there? Because there wasn't much else to say. It was like, hey, he's all right. Jeremy Corbyn is like, oh, who's his best friend? Adabu Hamza. What? He, he wants to eat children. It's literally just one thing after another of like, you know, this geezer like really does hang out with some dodgy people. I expect the press to accelerate his cheerleading for the government while savaging its opponents. Well, stop making yourself so savageable. You know? Whoever becomes Labour leader will come under remorseless pressure from within the party, the right-wing media and the Tories to bury Corbynism. Good, because it doesn't work, does it? That will not just involve demands for purges, but also the abandonment of domestic policies and a pivot rightwards on social issues. Nothing will ever be enough. As David Cameron discovered with the Tory Brexiteers, every concession will just make the critics fatter and hungrier. Yeah, there's those evil oligarchs and shit, isn't it, Owen? Johnson's refusal to apologise for his back catalogue of racism and homophobia bit strong, uh, leaves every bigot feeling that their hatred has prime ministerial seal of approval. No, it doesn't, because you get thrown in jail, you fucking nutter. This is 2020, bitch. Listen up, this is 2020. It was 2019, now it's 2020. Nothing like... Look at the amount of cases of people getting banged up for, like, really minute things. Look, Just look across the board of charges against people. Like, it doesn't, the, the hatred hasn't been given a prime ministerial seal of approval. You're really going off the rails here. You're going a bit too far. It has not been given a prime ministerial seal of approval. It's a ridiculous statement. Okay. As much as I don't think anti-Semitism has been given a seal of approval by Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> or has it, bitch? Has it? Hmm... Did he apologise? Expect the already cruel victimisation of... Here we go. Of uh, left talk privately... I don't know, I've lost that. What's, what's going on? All uh, oh, right. Uh, the victimisation of minorities ranging from Muslims to trans people to accelerate. Even so... Even some of Labour's left talk privately of pivoting rightwards on social issues. They should tell us which minority they wish to throw under the bus. Oh my God, Owen, for goodness sake, will you calm the hell down? Well, they're going to go rightwards and um, they should tell us which minorities they're going to throw under the bus. Going rightwards isn't about throwing minorities under a bus or for the persecution of people. It's about going... Ease up a bit. Uh, going, you're taking the piss a little bit. No, it's it's basically that. It's just going, nah. You know, conservatism. Think about it as a skirt. Okay. So this is this is this is the hips, and this is the, this is all right. What was it? Okay, okay. Right. Here's the hips, and this is the ass area, and uh, the ankles are down here. Okay. So you know, fully liberalism is. Um, you know, your average liberal person, you know, just short, just below the, you know, we can't see no arse cheeks and stuff, you know. And the conservatives, you know, this is average moderate people, like, yeah, yeah. But the conservatives are like, well, a bit down here, please, a bit down here, please. Uh, and then, you know, and you can be even more liberal here, Ooh, a little bit of bum cheek. And then you've got the super progressive left wing. It's like, no, no skirt, just all ass. There is political divide explained with a cheeky little metaphor. And that's what it is. It, 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 it's, it's just a game. No, everyone can do No, you don't need to work. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, what do you want to do? Oh, what's that? You don't want to speak English? You want to, you want to worship a, you want to worship a what? A devil hound and, and sacrifice babies. Well, is that what you do in your country? Oh, that's fine. I'm saying it's just like, it's just going, hey, hey um, chill out a bit, please. But I mean, Owen's world is like, it's just evil. Like, how are trans rights 
going to be punished under the Conservative government. Have you seen what's going on in terms of trans rights in the UK? Have you seen what you can get prosecuted for? Have you seen what they're teaching in schools? Have you seen what they're letting to, to, what's actually happening to six-year-old children? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Are you mad? Are you absolutely mad? <clears throat> you know? You're living in an incredibly progressive country. The amount of progressive nonsense that's been pushed forward under the Conservative government is a lot. So what are you talking about? There used to be a uh, demarcation, I don't know, I don't know that word, between the centre-right and the extremes beyond, summed up by Cameron's description of UKIP as fruitcakes, loonies and closet racists mo mostly. Well, that's what you would say about your nearest fucking political rival. Not so today, far-right thug. It's like far-right thug. Thug. I think I think we can like Tommy Robinson's thug status is definitely diminished, doesn't it? He's not really a thug no more, is he? You can't really call him a thugged out motherfucker. I'd like pre prior thug. When was the last time he did anything thugged out? Even when he was in jail, he's getting his ass whipped. You know what I mean? He was a proper thug. When he was in jail, he should have been biting people's noses off and shit. I don't hear about none of that. So I don't need to Tommy Robinson's thug status is revoked. He ain't a thug no more. He's out thug club. Thug life no more. And reportedly celebrated the Tory electoral win by claiming he was joining the party. Well, he won't be allowed to because he was a member of the fucking... He was a member of the BNP, right? <clears throat> well, I don't know about the Conservatives. So I'm pretty sure... He, I do know that you can't join UKIP if you've been a member of the BNP, but you can join the Labour Party if you've been a member of the BNP. I'm pretty sure that's true. Look it up. I might be wrong. Britain First apparently urged its supporters to join to make Boris Johnson's leadership more secure. Well, who else are right-wing? You know, far-right people are going to vote Conservative, aren't they? Uh, oh, sorry. Except Nick Griffin, who loves Jeremy Corbyn. Nick Griffin, who who is... Um, now, Britain First and Tommy Robinson um, have, you know, I'm no fan. Uh, they've rejected like organisations like the KKK, Combat 18 and so forth. They have, they've rejected these, these motherfuckers. Whereas the BNP leader, or the former BNP leader of the former BNP party, Nick Griffin, and you know, it has, has, has openly supported the KKK, and is a complete anti-Semite. And he's been supporting Jeremy Corbyn. So what do you think that tells you about everything? I mean, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Because Tommy Robinson and Britain First have anti-Muslim rhetoric, but they're not anti-Semites. Okay. And who else? Who else doesn't like the Jews? Ask yourself, who are the ones that don't like the Jews. And who's hanging out with who? Think about it. It's time to get smart now. It's 2020 now. You can't continue being stupid. Think about it. Anyway. Well, racist provocateur. Oh, please. Just provocateur. Katie Hopkins has gone. Kate, as soon as Katie Hopkins' old shtick died, you know, she went for the whole... She, she saw... She's an pure opportunist. She saw, like, the way the wind was blowing. And suddenly she's this fucking patriot. You know, she's gone this full-blown full blown Brexit-supporting, closed-borders patriot shtick, you know, to offend people. Kate Hobbs is not a racist. She is a provocateur, though. Uh, but that's her shtick, man. You know, and she'd love being called a racist as well. Especially in today's climate, because it's meaningless. It's, 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 a meaningless it's a meaningless label these days, because it just gets used too much. I'm not sticking up for Katie Hopkins. But I just know a shtick, man. You should know a shtick by now. It's, it's, you've, I've always said about people, when they get riled up about Katie Hopkins for years, it's like, just ignore her. Just ignore the bitch. Ignore Kate. And, get, and guess where Katie Hopkins used to wind everyone up? Where, where did she do her best wind-up merchant shtick? Twitter. 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 Anyone. Anyone. Okay, who's big makes a big splash on Twitter should be ignored. Because Twitter should be ignored, alright? Anyway, set my piece. 
Anyway, she boasted to Saida Wazi that it's our party now. Um, that can be taken out of context. Just saying. It's Owen Jones that's the Guardian. Of course it's taken out of context. The far right fret against minorities on the left will heighten. But the latter will be portrayed as a dangerous rabble. The acceptance of that narrative helps explain how, during the election, the alleged assault of two Labour canvassers in their 70s was largely ignored, while the supposed punching of a Tory advisor by a Labour activist, activist which never happened, attracted widespread publicity. I'm pretty sure that the Tory advisor, who was, who, the claims about the Tory advisor that was punched by a Labour activist um, was widely spread because it was fake. I'm pretty sure, isn't it? That's why everyone's talking about it, if I remember correctly. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, all of these... All of this is bleak, yes. It's not... Like, you've painted it as bleak. You can you can twist anything into being very bleak. Very much. I'll say why in a second. Hang on. But it's better to be prepared than to be overwhelmed by the coming deluge. A traumatised left must unite in the face of unprecedented adversity. In Hungary, the centre-right Fidesz party... Radicalized when it was sorry the center center right I, know, I thought they were far right Owen I can't quite make up my mind uh, went in office into an authoritarian right wing extremist administration that has destroyed the substance of democracy while maintaining its pretense it is not advisable the same will happen here but it is entirely plausible progressives should buckle up brace brace or just change your fucking ways because here's part there's two there's two main problems as well there's this is ones that people haven't really pointed out as much uh, forget the fact about you know how the working class have felt betrayed by the labor party and this is this goes way beyond this is this is from decades and decades all right this is before brexit this is why brexit happened in the first place you know this is the there's been a, a gradual disintegration of that party all right okay so because the thing, when Labour got in, the fact is they, they got in last time. And they stayed in because of Tony Blair, because because of centralists. Centralists. Centrists. Centrists. Right-leaning people voted for Labour. Swings both ways, man. No, everything didn't always used to be like this. But the point a lot of people... So, forget all the other reasons why Labour lost. Because there's many of them. But I'll tell you one thing why Boris Johnson wins and Labour loops, in spite of everything, it's positivity. We've been living in an age of fear and doom and gloom for a very long time now. And Adam Curtis talks about this um, very well in, uh, I can't remember which documentary it was. Uh, sorry, I can't remember which one it is that he talks about. But, you know, he says, you know, we used to live in the age of um, you know, like the 60s and beyond, we used to the, the age of wonder where the future was going to be bright and amazing, going to have robots sucking our dicks and fucking, you know, all diseases would be cured and interracial marriage would not be a problem and you could, you know, and all sexualities would be embraced and blah, 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 blah. And that kind of happened. And it did actually happen. Um, but then we got sold the politics of fear, especially around the turn, you know, turning of the millennium. You know, 9 11, baby. And then the, the politics of doom and gloom is entrenched everywhere. Um, it's, it's the politics of fear. Now this, the fear politics has changed into doom and gloom. You can try and say that uh, the, sorry, the Conservative Party are, are um, using fear politics, but not really. When you really think about it, the general message that has been projected by the Labour Party and by the Conservative Party it's, it's the doom and gloom merchants are all on the Labour Party side. All they can sell you is a fearsome vision of the future if you don't vote for them. Whereas Boris Johnson says, here's a wonderful vision of the future if you vote for me. The positive and negative. People have had enough of the negative fucking shit. Alright. You can come across as all... You see, they try and sell this, uh, this, this message... You know, there's the socialist types of like, you know, oh, it's wonderful. We love everybody. Everybody should be free, and you know, everyone's going to prosper, and all this, all this. But if it, but if you don't want utopia, you will burn in hell. If you don't do something about climate change, you're fucking doomed, and you'll burn in hell. 
It was a conservative party. I like going, well, everything's going to be great. And you're like, oh, cool. And here's Aaron Jones saying, oh, we shouldn't move over to the right. Well, R.I.P., bitch. R.I.P. That's all I can say. But it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't end there, though, my little chums. Oh, no, no, no. It's not just Owen Jones who's completely lost.